you are mindful of him and the son of man, that you care for him. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my heart? That the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Says, do not fear. 
I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. All the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, this morning as we come together to worship you and to praise you, we, we ask the question, who am I that you would love me? Who are we that you would love us? And Father, the answer to that question is found in that song is that we are yours. We belong to you. And Father, we know that nothing can separate us from your love and your grace. Nothing can separate us, Lord, from your protection, from your, from your refuge. Nothing can, can separate us, Lord, from your presence in our life and our midst. And so we rejoice this morning. We thank you, Father, for being with us. And for loving us, we who are so unlovely. And you loved us with the greatest love of all, your love. Your love that caused you to send your son to us, your son Jesus, to die on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven and to be raised from the dead so that we might live through all eternity in your presence. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us here, that each one of us will claim your presence in their life. That each one of us will claim that peace that you offer to all of us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning in our small group uh, study, we were looking at Psalm 91. And the, and the point of the psalmist, the point that the psalmist was trying to make is, uh, or was that God is our ultimate protection. And it's good to try to protect ourselves, and there's many ways that we can seek protection with our health, protection in, in our finances, uh, all protection in those who seek to hurt us. And, and we should try to find that kind of protection, but we need to understand that the ultimate protection of all comes to us in the presence of God in our life. Life is filled with, with many, many problems, many, many challenges. Some of them are small, trivial, and some of them are great and overwhelming. And too often, Christians become jigsaw Christians when we face those troubles because every time we are faced with a problem jigsaw Christians fall apart and uh, and, and that's not what we need to do because when we, we sp- sometimes find ourselves looking at our problems rather than looking at the problem solver and the psalmist this morning encourages us to look beyond our problems and look to the problem solver. The psalm here in the Psalm 91 expresses to us as followers of Jesus, to those of us who have claimed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to those of us who would call ourselves Christian, that we can be confident, confident, That we can have assurance in God's protection and in God's deliverance. So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to Psalm 91. And and, and we're going to look at that psalm kind of like verse by verse, not all of it, but part of it. And um, we're going to look at how God is our protector and the promise of God to deliver us. So in the very first verse, and this very... Verse 1 is like the foundation of this whole psalm. Verse 1 is, is a verse that we need to repeat over and over again. That we need to claim it for ourselves. It's a wonderful verse. 
those who live in the shelter of the Most High. Um, other translations have those who live in the protection, under the protection of the Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. There's a story told of a believer by the name of Frederick Nolan. He was fleeing his enemies in, in northern Africa. There was a great persecution of Christians going on. And, and he was running from those who, who were seeking after him. And when they found him, they were going to kill him. And so he ran as fast and as far and as smart as he could. The pursuers were right behind him. And all out of breath and coming to the very end of his strength, he happened to come by a little opening in a cliff or in some rocks. Some people might call it a cave. And he made his way into this opening. And there he sat catching his breath, awaiting his pursuers to come. And when they came, he knew it was certain death. And as he was sitting there waiting, he noticed that there was a little spider. And this spider had begun to um, spin its web, if you will. And the more he sat, the more of the web the spider spun. Until after a few moments, that whole opening in that, in that little cave, in, in that little place that where, where he was, in just a few moments, that whole opening was covered with this web. His pursuers came running by and they looked into the cave and they were headed into that opening except one of them noticed that there was this spider web all across it. And, and, and they came to the conclusion that if he had gone in there, he would have gone through the spider web and would have, torn, would have just torn it down and so they went on. A few years later, Nolan wrote after he had escaped, he, said, he wrote this, he said, Where God is, a spider's web is like a wall. Where God is not, a wall is like a spider's web. Psalm 5 verse 11 says, But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them that those who love your name may exalt in you. 1 John 5.18 He who was born of God, God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. The Lord is my protector. Secondly, in verse 2, the Lord is my place of safety. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In 1960, there was an uprising in the nation of Kenya. And there were two missionaries. They were trying to leave the country before it got out of hand and, and before so they could save their life. And so they got into a Land Rover and they were on their way to the airport in, in Nairobi. The two missionaries, Matt and Laura Higgins. And as they were driving and as they were, as they were going along, um, they had car trouble and they had to stop. And it was getting late and they couldn't fix the car. And so they decided that they would have to spend the night in the car. They locked the car, they prayed for safety, and all the while they knew that this route that they were on, these terrorists were, were going back and forth, and, and they were really at the mercy of them. They woke up the next morning, got their car fixed, whatever was wrong with it was fixed, made their way to the airport, and, and on to the United States. They happened to be talking to an individual who had contact with the terrorists. 
And, and this individual said, well, you know, on that night, on that night, um, there, was, there were three of these individuals that saw your car. And, and, and they were going to attack you. In fact, they were going to kill you. But as they approached the car, they, for, they, they saw 16 men surrounding the vehicle. And they were afraid. And they ran off. Later on, after they got back to the States, uh, they, they, they had returned and they heard the testimony of a friend. And their friend said to them, On March 23rd, the Lord burdened me about you two. And so I called some of the men in our church. And 16 of us got together and we prayed for you that night. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Proverbs 29.25 The fear of man lays a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. The Lord is my safety. The Lord is my protector. And in verse 3, the Lord is my deliverer. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Now as as believers, as people who have faith in Jesus Christ, as, as people who have trust the Lord with our eternal destiny, we really have no grounds ever to be afraid. We really have no reason to ever be discouraged or to be dejected. Now that doesn't mean that we aren't at times because all of us are, but if you get down to the bottom line, we really have no reason to be that way. We, there's nothing that we can say that would, that would rationalize our fear and our discouragement. No conflict however great it might be, no predicament should ever crush us as long as we can draw close to the Lord. We have no idea how long the onslaught would be. We have no idea how long the trouble is going to last. We have no perception of how great and overwhelming it might be or how deep the troubled waters may get. We can't fathom it all. But we know with confidence that they will all pass. And we know with confidence that ultimately there will be deliverance. We know that with with confidence that ultimately there is victory. God is not only our refuge, but God is also our deliverer who will see us through the darkest, deepest, most challenging moments of our life. Psalm 34, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my safety. The Lord is my protector. In verse 4, the Lord is my shelter. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. You know, one of the interesting insights into this verse is that often our understanding of God and who God is, we see him as God the Father. We see Him as God the strong. 
We see him as God the warrior. We see him as God the mighty one in battle. But notice in this verse, we see God as a, if you will, a mother hen who seeks to comfort us and care for us and take care of us. Remember as Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem just before he was arrested and before he was crucified, he, he cried out to the city. He said, Oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how I would have loved you to, to how I would have loved to, to have, have taken you under my wings and protected you as a mother hen protects her baby chicks. And this is a a powerful visual of God not only being the strong and the very callous and, 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 and mighty one, but God being the very gentle, quiet individual as well. There was a forest fire in Yellowstone Park several years ago, and after the fire was over, the forest rangers trekked up the mountain to kind of assess what was going on. And as they were walking through all of the ashes and all of the burnt um, trees and, and, and all, of, all of the brush and all, all of that, uh, one of the rangers came across this one tree. And in front of this tree was this very eerie, sickening almost um, thing. And he, and he went up to it and he kind of poked around it a little bit and he, and he saw that it was a, a petrified bird. Black. Ashes all around it. Its, its feathers were all gone. And it kind of got to him. And he kind of went over and just kind of kicked it over. It was sitting right up, right up, standing right up against this tree. And as he kicked the little bird over that was dead and just kind of a crispy critter type thing, underneath the wing, where the wing was of that bird, came some little chicks scurrying out from from underneath. The mother was somehow aware of the impending disaster. She knew what was going to happen. And so she, what she had, had done was to carry her offspring with her underneath the, underneath the base of the tree and gathered them all together underneath her wings. Now she could have flown off to a place of safety, but she refused to abandon her little babies. And when the blaze got closer and closer and closer, and as the heat of the fire came, came closer and closer, began to singe all of her feathers and, and began to heat her up, um, she remained steadfast. And because she was willing to die, those under the cover of her wings would live. Colossians 3.3, 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Psalm 119, you are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. The Lord, in verse 5, the Lord is my peace. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. The peace, the peace that Jesus gives is, as we all know, is not the absence of trouble. The peace that Jesus gives is the confidence that he is with us always have you seen pictures of peace can you visualize in your mind a picture of peace one of the reasons why I like the um, calendars that we give away each year I like the, um, the pictures and as you look through the pictures of the calendar uh, many of them are so peaceful 
And, and by the way, we have several calendars left over there in the foyer or in the foyer and pick some up, pick some up for yourself, for your neighbors, give, give them away. But, but just look at some of those pictures in the calendar. Pictures of mountains and green and, and they're so peaceful to look at. Uh, one of the pictures of peace for me is, is the picture of, of the seashore. And uh, Steve has that up there. I mean, there's nothing more peaceful to me than to sit on the beach and watch the waves as they break into the shore, one by one by one. And if you spend the whole day at the seashore and, and you just look out at the sea, when you go home that night, when you go to bed, when you close your eyes, you can still hear the seashore. You can still hear the waves breaking along the um, beach. One of my uh, most peaceful pictures recently that I have seen is, is, this, one, is this one right here. Um, it doesn't look very peaceful, and I turned the lights out so that you could see this a little bit better, but let me describe it a little bit. Uh, these are the storm clouds, and so you can tell there's a storm coming. Here's some lightning, bolts of lightning. Here are the waterfalls. The water's just falling. I mean, just falling uncontrollably, but, but it's, for me, it's a, it's a very calming picture of peace. And it's not because I like storm clouds or I like lightning. And it's not because I can hear the th can, can you not hear the thunder in that picture? I can hear the thunder. It's not because I like to hear the thunder or uncontrollable uh, water falling over rocks. But I want to call your attention to, to this right here, this place right here. Uh, right there is a little bird. And the little bird is in the cleft, if you will, of that of those rocks and all of the storm all of this is raging all around her and she is right there and if probably if we got up close enough we would see that little bird uh, in her nest uh, taking care of her little um, her little babies go ahead and go to the next picture there here's the here's the big picture and right here is the peace, is the calmness of it all in the midst of the storms. You ever feel that way? You ever feel like everything is just blowing up all around you and, and, and you really just, everything seems out of control and then you find that little place where it's peaceful. Isaiah 26, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Second Thessalonians 3.16 Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace. At all times. In every way. The Lord be with you all. And then finally the Lord is my confidence. Verse 7 Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Faith is the confidence in the rock of our salvation for what God will do for us and in us. Psalm 32, many are the sorrows of the wicked. But steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. But steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord. Rejoice, O righteous. And shout for joy, all you upright in heart. If you've ever been to the airport to get on a plane and waited for the 
uh, for the call to get on the plane. You have, you're, you're there and, and you're looking around, you're at the airport, you will quickly notice that there are two kinds of people that are waiting for the plane. There are those people who have their boarding pass in hand. Not their reservation, but their boarding pass. <coughs> and then there are those who are flying standby. And you can see the difference in them. <clears throat> For those that have their boarding pass, they know that in just a few moments, someone is going to announce the boarding of that plane. And they know, they are confident, that when that announcement is made, that they're going to get on that plane and they're going to make it to their destination. So, so you find those folks sitting down, reading the newspaper, napping, talking with one another, enjoying some refreshment, uh, just kind of relaxed and chill. But those folks who are flying standby, those folks who don't have the boarding pass, they're the ones that are walking back and forth uh, uh, by the ticket counter. They're the ones that are listening to everything that's being said by those people behind the desk wondering if whether or not they're going to get on that plane and find their destination. And the difference is caused by the confidence factor. One individual, the one with the boarding pass, is confident. The other, not so much. And my question this morning is, what is your confidence factor? Are you confident in the Lord's, Lord's ultimate protection? Or are you finding yourself pacing back and forth anxious over the outcome of the latest trouble and challenge that you face in this life? And so my, my challenge to all of us this morning is that we might find protection and safety and deliverance, shelter, peace, and confidence in Jesus' presence in our life today. Now maybe you don't have the presence of Jesus in your life. Maybe you've never accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. This morning is the time to do it. This moment is the moment to do that. There is no, there is no reason to put it off to another day or another time. Right now, you need to have that peace of God that comes through Jesus Christ in your life. And as we sing in just a moment, I would invite you to come and, and, and do that and, and share that decision with us. But maybe this morning you do have God's presence. If I were to ask you this morning, if, if, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you are a Christian, you would say yes. If you would answer yes to that question, then rely on God's presence. Trust in God's love. Who am I that God would even consider me? I belong to Him. Who am I? I'm one of His. And God will ultimately protect me and deliver me and provide me a place of safety in my life and in His presence.